Let's start this part of the tutorial by looking at the ACT method from our CRAB class. We see that in the ACT method, we're performing different pieces of functionality. We're turning the CRAB if it's at the edge, we're doing a random turn, we're hunting and eating worms, and then we're doing a move. In general, it's not a good idea to have disparate actions all located in a single procedure. One of your readers looking at your code might accuse you of writing spaghetti code. This is not a compliment. What we need to do is to create some additional methods and place each piece of functionality in a separate method and then call those methods here. That will lend our code to a much nicer structure. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add some new methods to our existing crab class. Let's create a method whose job it is to turn the crab if it reaches the edge. The keyword public means that anyone can call this method. The keyword void means that this particular method does not return an answer to the caller. Every method in Java has to have parentheses and this particular method takes no parameters. The opening and closing curly brackets define the begin and end of the method. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this piece of functionality and we're going to move it into a separate method like this. And here we're going to replace it with the name of the method or the method call. Now we're going to do the same for the other methods. With that, we have made some changes to our code, but as far as the external or end user sees it, the functionality is going to look identical to what we had before. What we've done is improve the internal structure of the code without changing its functionality. When we do this, we say that we have refactored the code. Refactoring is an important step in the development of a large program. It creates a better structure both for the reader and for the original author. It's important that you restructure your programs before final submission. In the next portion of our simulation, we're going to replace the random movements of the crab with keyboard control from the user. To do this, let's start again by looking at the crab code. We're going to start by turning off the turn at edge and the random turn methods. Instead of deleting this code, it is often much more simple to turn these code blocks into comments. We can do this simply by using the double slash comment operator in Java. Now this code will no longer execute. If we wanted to, we could turn it back on later by uncommenting the code. This is generally a better idea than deleting code because you might need it in the future. Let's create a new method now. And now let's write this new method. Notice once again we're making use of static methods, in this case is key down, to figure out when the left or the right arrow has been pressed by the user. This would be a good time to mention that we have not used the open and close curly braces on the if statement because there is only one line that's the target of the if. When this is the case, the opening and closing curly brackets are optional on the if statement. We're now going to add some comments to the header of this method to describe what it does. With that, now let's try out our new remote control crab and see how well it works. 
By hitting the left and right arrows on my keyboard now, I'm able to guide the crabs towards the worms. Can you hear the crab making the slurping sounds as it's eating the worms? That's the new feature we're going to add to our simulation now. Adding sounds in Greenfoot is extremely simple. Let's have a look at the crab code. In the look for worm method, we've added one additional line of code, which is once again a static function called play sound from the Greenfoot class. And we've added this slurp.wave file, which is played each time a worm is eaten. To see what wave files are already available for the current class, what we can do is go to the Greenfoot stuff folder and go to the scenario that we're currently installing. And under sounds, we can see that this particular scenario, which is the crab scenario, has three particular sounds already installed, the slurp, the fanfare, and the AU. We'll leave it to you to experiment with the two other sounds. If you don't like any of the sounds that are available, you can also record your own sounds by going to controls and then showing the sound recorder. Here, you can create your own recording, give it a name, and import it into your project. Have fun!